Ah, we're already in the 60 FPS, do you notice it? Everything's going fast. Like it renders it really easy. Look at look at this word. <laughs> 220 FPS. Game has no issue whatsoever. Rendering at a high resolution. Damn. That is man. Pause horizon. One emulated in 60 FPS in 1440p. Smooth and very clean. Finally I get to enjoy this game in 60 FPS. <laughs> spending the time to set it up. I will give you a run through of how I set it up. So you're gonna save yourself hours of setting up. Doesn't that look fine? So much better than what it runs on the on the Xbox. On the Xbox you know it's just upscaled to 4k right it's not actually running at 4k. The emulator on the other hand is running on a high resolution making this game look like it's an Xbox One game. Also there was an extra option that I turned on in the game specific patches which removes the motion blur too. Other than the game looking gorgeous now, it is also a fantastic game. The most difficult thing about emulation at the moment is that there is no good uh, like source we can go to where like everything is explained. So we kind of have to tr do this ourselves with a lot of research and trying things out. Alright, let's do our first event, let's see if everything works. <laughs> right now I'm trying to find anything wrong, right? Like I'm looking for anything that is not properly emulated, or not running at 60, but it just works, man. This is, this is a bit a dream come true, man. Finally being able to play this game in such high resolution and frame rate, most importantly. And I've been waiting for this. It feels like an unofficial PC port, yeah. <laughs> Interior view is kind of buggy. Ooh, let's try it out. Oh yeah, interior seems uh, seems unnecessarily dark. That no, was it the setting that I did earlier, right? Like in the options, what was it? There it is. Nah, it's still it's still very dark on the inside. I mean, maybe it's just the current setting. I don't know. Probably seems a bit darker than it should be. Oh, I see. I see what you mean by look at the interior. You can actually look through the dashboard. <laughs> How convenient is that? Now you can see the roadkill as it gets squished. Still have to get used to how smooth this game can be, man. Why do I like Horizon 1 so much? Because it actually features a progression system. You start with slower cars and you have to work your way th to faster cars and you also had opponents that were progressively getting stronger with their cars that you had to beat, you know, kind of like the blacklist. That is what this game had. It actually does look even sharper now. But man, this is, this is not super user-friendly. Unless you have someone that gives you a full guide for, for every game, you are gonna struggle a bit with all the settings. This looks beautiful, man. This looks so much more like Horizon 2 now. Dude, look at the text. Even the text is super high resolution. I mean, pretty impressive how they can upscale text in a way where it looks good. And that's like the big game changer here. The super resolution, FSR, Fidelity super resolution, that AMD software, is amazing. It's open source, so it can be used. And it really makes a big difference. Like it actually uses what your graphics card has available anyways and takes away a huge amount of processing needed from the emulator. So yeah, this is actually running in 4K60 now. I mean, I can fully appreciate it because my, my monitor is in 4K, but it is still improving the overall uh, visual quality, especially for items in the distance. They will look much higher resolution, if that's a word. <laughs> now there's no point playing Horizon 5. I mean, if they also make some kind of multiplayer... <laughs> and I know there's like so many bait videos on YouTube where it says like it's 4K60 and basically they name like a 10... They take a, like a, a 1080p 30fps footage and then they just upscale it to 4K60. And to be fair, sometimes a 60fps uh, interpolation looks really good. But it's not, it's not natively running at 60. This, this is on the other hand. There's your, there's your number one side effect of 60fps. Like, the people are moving twice as fast than usual. Literally the only problem that I've seen so far. Yeah, because the people are rendered in 30 FPS, if you uh, turn it to 60, they move twice as fast. But I'm just happy that this is the only one that is, like, t t uh, tied to frame rate, right? This has been, like, the holy grail for me for a long time, being able to play Horizon 1 Remastered, basically. High resolution, 60 FPS, Horizon 1, man. Still, still the favorite for me in the franchise, and usually I was okay with you know playing, um, playing the game in uh, you know low resolution. The best thing I had was like the 4K version on the Series X, but even that it didn't look nearly as clear as this because the 4K on the Xbox was mostly upscaled and not the game actually being rendered at 4K. Okay, so far everything has been stable, no weird bugs or anything. 
Like physics wise it feels exactly the same. I don't see any issues here. Right, time for the first boss, Ramona. It's funny, it's like only the first option card that is that is messed up. <laughs> you know, I always found it interesting that B is competitive, but C isn't. And and I can't actually tell the game, hey, I want this card 500. It won't let me. Like there should have been there should have been an option to upgrade your car even if it's already in the right speed class. You can race anyways. Yeah, I'm not sure if... Nah, my opponent is probably not gonna adjust to my performance level. I'm not sure how far the Horizon 2 emulation is, but I saw at least one guy doing this successfully on YouTube, and that is usually enough confidence for me that I should be able to pull it off too. I mean, that's usually what what's happen, uh, what happens, isn't it, right? It's like you have modders and people that work on emulators that make sure that old games appear in a new light and also that you can play the DLC again, which you can't buy anymore. Like, that's the biggest downside of DLC. If it's not physical, it means at some point you can't buy it anymore. Even not even used. But most DLC is only available in the store and if the store discontinues it, it's just gone. But yeah, I found some videos where people were already trying to emulate this game back in 2016. You can see how long and how many people it takes to actually emulate old games like this. Like, you cannot underestimate how crazy passionate some people are and how long they're willing to work on something until it works. Extremely impressive what they did here. Like, this is running without a hitch. Like, I was expecting some frame drops here and there, you know, maybe there's like a... There's like an area in the game that is harder to emulate or something. Uh, no. <laughs> it just works, man. Perfectly smooth as 60 FPS. Kaz actually is super grippy as long as you don't have to awkwardly dodge traffic, man. <laughs> the mirrors are a bit glitchy, yeah. It's not perfect, but it's the closest. Dude, I've never seen the RT-12R so high resoluted on the car itself. <laughs> like, you could actually read it. That is such a small font that it's barely readable. I'm actually not sure how much this is GPU heavy versus CPU heavy. Let's give it a check. <laughs> I feel like the emulator could use a lot more resources. Look at this. CPU is at 10%, 15%. GPU is at 38%. <laughs> like, this, this emulator could actually suck a lot more performance out of my system if it wanted to. Especially my CPU barely does anything. But hey, finally we got something where my new hardware can shine. Like, unless it's a new game coming out, I don't really get to use all of the horsepowers that I have in my machine. <laughs> Imagine having this experience earlier. Like, they should have released an Xbox One version up great for this game too. Like when they released Horizon 2 they should have just slapped down this game again for the Xbox One. Yeah, whoever picked the songs in Horizon 1 definitely knew what they were doing. I think this is interesting for a lot of people because they they might have missed the first game. They don't have a console that is even backwards compatible with this game. They just don't want to buy this game and they just want, they just want to play it. <laughs> but I will say emulating this takes a lot of pre-work. <laughs> Yeah, man, his car does not look... Especially the fitting on the wheels looks so weird on his car. Okay, his car does not seem very competitive. It has no grip, that's that's the biggest issue. Like, it just slides all over the place. It just slides... <laughs> off the track, man. I should have just used my other car and upgraded that one. And it's not like the car is like so powerful that it makes it up for it in a straight line. Okay, this is some of the fun stuff this game has to offer. <laughs> oh, the crashing sound during the cutscene. <laughs> Did you hear that? Guru is here. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Sorry, Harry. And it is it is better than its successes. I totally agree. Like I had I had the most fun with Horizon One simply because of the progression, getting in faster cars over time, while exploring the map and beating bosses, that's such a nice structure and you have that festival feel about the game. I just wish they put as much blood, sweat and tears in the other games. I mean the second one still does a pretty good job, but it already already falls off in my opinion. What they did with the second game was not as good as the first one. And starting with Horizon 3 you really have that rinse and repeat formula. Like since Horizon 3 not much has changed atmosphere over realism oh yeah definitely the right priorities 
It just feels like a cool place to be. Oh yeah, this game actually features a decent damage model still. Like they, they actually tried really hard in this game. But I think they were already at the maximum, like trying to make a damage model for all the cars. Like the more cars the game has, the harder it becomes to also include a damage model. I think that's the best time to replay a game when you when it's like 5-10 years, you kind of forgot most of it already. You just remember it was a good fun game. And you boot it up again and you play it again. See through mirror? Oh yeah. It's super convenient. <laughs> Like, usually you're blocked by the mirror glass, but now I can see you through. Like, how convenient is that? When's the last time you asked yourself, man, why can't I look through the mirror? There are some events in this game where the hard difficulty can't even be beaten with the car that they recommend. Either you need, like, a custom tuning or just a different car. Your car is ineligible for this event. Oh, I want to use my Ferrari. <laughs> How's the handling to Horizon 5? Very similar. Although I do think that the handling got a little bit better in modern versions of Horizon, but not so much that it matters really. Yeah, exactly. It's a little bit less responsive. It's a little bit harder to race in this game than in Horizon 5. Some might like that, some might not. But it is it is very, very similar. Nice. <laughs> Dude, the game is a lot faster at recognizing that he flipped over. Also, the loading times are really good on emulator. <laughs> I think I'm gonna need a new car. Oh, that was brutal. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> hey! That's a fair win right there. So, if I installed everything correctly, we should now have access to the Horizon Rally on the emulator. There we go, that's the updated, that's the updated one. Welcome to Horizon Rally on the emulator. It's all working, it's 60 FPS. It was a bit complicated because you have to install like every DLC patch this game ever had. Like, you have to install the game patches and all, every kind of DLC that the game ever had. The extra grip from all-wheel drive is a little bit better. Okay, we're behind. No, we're not, actually. Who sets up these... <laughs> these checkpoints, man? Can't even go for the racing line when they're in the way. Yeah, we're super far behind. Why is it green when we are 1.2 seconds behind? Makes no sense. I feel like if I turn the car a little bit more, we might actually bounce off the wall, you know what I mean? Oh, we do it, <laughs> we do it proper. <laughs> Probably faster. Oh, wow, the recovery, holy shit. Man, that that turnaround must have been so fast. We came back from a three-second def three deficit. Look how bouncy the car is. What the hell? This is not the bounty, bounty mode. Bouncy mode. Hey, Grandma, you call that driving? Dude, this is so fucking staged. Like, how are you four seconds behind here? Yeah, I made a small mistake, but I didn't make a four-second mistake. Oh, this is so this is so broken. They did not balance this whatsoever. Where did they pull these numbers out of their ass? Six seconds, are you kidding me? <laughs> So this is where it all started. All the way back here, cars could drive on the side and never flip back. I think it has been over two years since the last time I had my hands on the... Rally. <laughs> There's no hitbox. There's no hitbox at the end of the track. Straight into the audience. What you gotta do first is download Xenia Canary, the newest version. Then, you need to create the portable.txt file and start Canary for the first time. So, you click it, you, it starts, and now it creates the Canary config. And for this game in particular, I didn't actually change anything in the, um, in the Canary config or in the Forza Horizon patch, with one exception. You can actually disable motion blur here, set that to true, save, and it will carry over to the game. You can buffer the audio, there's a few improvements. You can max Q frames to 16, that helps. Oh yeah, I set the internal resolution to 9 to 12, 19, yeah, 1080p here. That made it better. 
have one more thing. Oh yeah, for the V-Sync interval, I changed it to 8. And make sure that ply patches is set to true, should be by default. D set mount cache to true. There. Mount cache to true. That was the last thing. And once you changed everything, you just press save. Okay, one more thing. Then you can boot up the game. And when you boot up the game, F11 for full screen. And if you press F6, this is the cool stuff. You can use AMD Fidelity FX, which basically is super sampling, which makes your 1080p internal resolution into a 4K image with a lot less performance than what the emulator would need. You can run it with a f without, but now the game's actually running in 1080p. Like, it looks a lot, a lot softer, as you can notice. Right, the entire image looks a lot softer. You turn this on, boom. <laughs> Way sharper. You don't have to use it, right? You can turn it off. You can use the medium setting, like whatever you prefer. It gets definitely a lot softer. And yeah, but this, this just looks amazing. This is as close as it gets right now to 4K60. And yeah, it set this up to zero, because that's on default 0 0.2. It gets way softer, the entire image. And everything blends into another. Like this actually makes it look so much more clean. Like this actually looks like 1080p now. This looks more like 1440p, that's 4K. But yeah, that's it. That you can open with F6 or you just go here into the basic settings here. Fairly complicated to set up in comparison to other emulators, but that is what we have at the moment. And it works. That's it for me tonight. <laughs> Definitely do come back on Sunday and good night. Bye bye.